let's quickly set up a hardware model in our mind. So uh, what you're looking at is actually a snapshot of the hardware layout of my system at a logical level. So right at the top, you will see the NUMA node, which is basically 31 GB, which basically means the memory. So this is the logical memory uh, of 32 gigs that is being shown to you. Under it, on the left side, as you can see, is L3, which is the 24 MB, which basically means it is the L3 cache. Then you will see the L2, L1D, and L1I. So basically the L2 cache and the L1 data cache, which is L1D, and L2 instruction, L1 instruction cache, L1I, 32 KB. Now these things are specific to a core. So a core L hash zero is basically hyper-threaded, which is, which has two logical units, right? So this is how a single core looks. Now my machine has eight cores and it has a uh, hyper-threaded. So I have 16 logical cores of execution. And on the right hand side, you will see the PCI slots on which there is a network card attached, which is the uh, third entry you will see from the top. The fourth entry is the hardware, uh, which is uh, which is the uh, hard disk. Sorry, so it is this uh, SSD. And uh, so this is a logical view of one hardware, which is my system. Adding the operating system to the equation will make the whole system look like this. So at the bottom, you can see the hardware, which we just uh, spoke about, eight core, 16 hardware threads. Above that will be the kernel scheduler. So basically the number of, uh, and on top of that, there will be number of processes running on my system. So the processes could be applications, services, the operating system itself has certain tasks running to manage the whole uh, uh, system that is running for one particular user, or if it is a multi-user environment, there could be multiple users logged into it. So this will vary based on the kind of device you are using. It will change from an IoT device to a server a grade machine and the desktop lies somewhere in the middle because the window manager and those kind of things will get involved. So the a whole idea is that the number of processes can be much, much larger than number of cores. And now we'll see how that is made possible. So each process has a set of memory locations allocated for specific tasks, which is uh, basically a stack heap and a program code. So the actual instructions come from the program code segment, which is uh, static, which cannot change at runtime. The heap and stack are uh, some things that can evolve. So the program code gets loaded in stack and the stack grows. Accordingly, the heap also grows based on the dynamic allocations. Now these two tend to move towards each other. So in certain operating systems, the memory uh, starts at a very, uh, the stack starts at a higher memory location and its number keeps getting reduced. So the stack pointer always keeps coming down. So let's say it starts at 100 and every time an instruction is loaded, it goes lower. So 99, 98 and those kind of things. The heap goes from low to high. Now they keep moving towards each other and if at all they meet, then you can get things like the memory exhaustion uh, runtime errors or the stack overflow errors based on which segment has over uh, walked over its boundary, right? So uh, the whole point is that you cannot use them uh, infinitely. And if you have run a Fibonacci uh, numbers program, then you know that it is very easy to achieve uh, stack uh, blow out by just running recursions, which uh, can grow uncontrollably. As mentioned earlier, each thread has its own stack. So if you are running a multi-threaded program, so in this case, I'm assuming that there are n threads running. So each thread will have its own stack and they will share the rest of the heap and the program code segments, right? So in, in that particular case, each thread knows that which set of instruction it needs to load and it will accordingly take those addresses and uh, start executing. Right? That will be handed off to the thread while thread creation. And we look at those syntaxes in one of the upcoming uh, lectures as well, because that is part of the uh, core idea of this course. But uh, the point is that each thread will have its stack, which is limited by definition. So it, it cannot exceed. So in Linux, maybe uh, I think it is 8 KB. You can check it as part of the man pages or whatever operating system you are working on. That's a standard number. For every process, it holds valid. Sometimes it is called uh, on Linux, the threads are called as lightweight processes. Like I mentioned that they share a lot of resources within a process. 
right so they take a huge chunk of already existing infrastructure for a process and build a stack on top of it right so the system called used in linux to create threads is clone it is not the typical fork command which generates a new process and that's where the notion of lightweight comes in because there is a sharing between the actual original process that was existing and the new thread that gets spawned just to cap up the concepts in a pictorial format if you assume that there is a machine with n number of cores and there are multiple time slices so at any given point there will be a certain thread running on each of the core now if a single program has multiple threads then they can be scheduled on any of these time slices and they will be scheduled on different cores as well so it is not guaranteed that the same thread will always run on the same core right so that is one of the external factors that can uh, affect your the performance of your code and those kind of things but notionally if you can look at this picture and embed it in your mind that at any given point of time your thread could be running on any core and it can be a while before it gets rescheduled so that is something which you need to just always remember in multi-threading